Next, on Images Imágenes, what are we, Latinos or journalists? Saludos, welcome to Images Imágenes. I'm Miguel Perez. Perhaps you know me from my column in the Bergen Record. I have devoted my career to covering the Latino community through the written word, on the radio, and on television. But now I'm delighted to be here, bringing you the images, those beautiful imágenes of the Hispanic community on the New Jersey Network. Today, we are beginning a new season of this award-winning program, and we are starting with a subject that has caused a great deal of debate among Hispanic journalists. What comes first? A journalist or Hispanic? That's the question we'll be debating with a panel of Latinas, Betsy Torres from NBC's Today Weekend Show, Monica Rohr from the Philadelphia Inquirer, Yvette Mendez from the Star Ledger, and my colleague from the Bergen Record, Elizabeth Llorente. Welcome all to the show. I'm delighted to have you here. Uh, this is a subject that has been debated among us Latino journalists for many years. Every year I go to the National Association of Hispanic Journalists where this becomes the main debate of the conference. And I'd like to have that conference again all over again for our audience. And basically the main question we want to debate is what comes first. And, and by that we mean what do we put first? Are the interests of our community or the interests of our professional career as journalists? Yvette, why don't you start us off? Okay, I, I don't think you can say what comes first. I mean, you could ask the question, and my response is, both issues are so intertwined. I am not a journalist first, I'm not a Latina first. The two are two major components of my life, and I can't separate the two. My main objective is to be, obje is to be objective, actually, as a journalist. Um, but I can't uh, take, uh, let's say, the Hispanic component out of my brain and put, put that aside and just be a journalist. And I can't take the journalist, the component out of my brain and just be a Latina. To me, uh, you, it's a nice mixture. It's a, it's a really nice mixture. But do you find a conflict there? Is there a conflict sometimes because you are pulling for your own community, but you're fully also pulling for your journalistic principles? Does that happen? I don't think there should be a conflict. I think as Latinas, our responsibility is to be the best reporters as possible. In that way, we re reflect on our community. We show that Latinos can go out there and succeed. And if we go out there and show that we're objective, I don't think there should be a conflict. It'd be like reporting on any issue. If I go and report on something in the Latino community, I go in there with the view of, of pointing out both sides, of getting all the facts out, and then bringing it out to the public so the public can view that. And that's not a conflict. I mean. I go in there always with my perspective, which comes from being a Latina, from being ra raised in a Latino household, and that's always there. That never goes away. I think we also have the advantage of being bicultural, um, so we know what it's like on, on both sides, and we can explain one side to the other. And you asked what's in the best interest. I think it, that what's in the best interest of the Hispanic community is that uh, journalists like us, who have the advantage of having that point of reference, uh, can bring out the facts without distorting them, uh, but at the same time give those facts perspective. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pleasure to be both. I think that we're blessed to have this wonderful culture that gives us an interesting perspective on our stories, but I think when I do my job, I am a journalist first, and I park that wonderful heritage and culture aside and look at the issues that need to be addressed and look at it and try to balance the issues that, we, that I have in front of me. Uh, one of the things that uh, also becomes a major debate at this annual conference of Hispanic journalists is whether we want to be assigned to cover our own community. Uh, many, mm -hmm. pe many Latinos do not want to cover uh, the barrio mm -hmm. because they figure that they are being uh, assigned as the token Latino. Others say, look, you know, I've already covered all the other beats. I've already covered the courts. I've already covered, I've been an investigative reporter. Now I want to concentrate on what I know best, which is my own community. Where do you guys stand on this? Well, yeah, I, I want to cover the Latino community, and I ask for those uh, kind of assignments, and I seek them out um, because, uh, like uh, was already stated, uh, we bring that perspective. But also, I don't think it should be limited to Latino reporters because uh, 
uh, non-Latino reporters need to see what's out there uh, in our communities and, and so that they can learn and, and ingest that and, 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 and bring it to the world from their perspective. I think, it, I think that covering the Latino community is a wonderful beat and it's full of just so much to, to so much is there that we haven't written about and that needs to be written about and shown on television. But I think there's a real danger if that become if you become ghettoized. If that's the only beat that you're allowed to cover, the, if those are the only issues that we're allowed to cover, we have to be able to choose that and say that's what I want to cover, not feel like that's where we're boxed in and that we can't break but, out of that box. But when you're covering the Latino community, you're covering all the issues because right. Latinos are involved yeah. in everything. But can I add something? Right. I think that the important questions to ask are uh, why is the paper covering, the, what is prompting the paper to cover the community? Of course, to us, the logical question is because it's an interesting community, um, we are a large part of the population of New Jersey and of the country, and how can a paper in New Jersey, in a state that has so many immigrants and where Latinos make up you know, close to 10% of the population, not cover the Hispanic community and still say that it's covering its area? Mm -hmm. But and then that's the first question: Is it is the paper covering the Hispanic community for the right reasons? Is it covering because of that, or is it covering the community because it wants, uh, it, it finds that it can no longer increase its profits with the current, uh, you know, population base, readership base, and then wants to go out to another uh, segment? Is that why it's covering it? Because if that's the reason, then it's covering for the wrong reasons, and the effort is going to be executed in the wrong way. And then the other question is, why is it assigning a Hispanic reporter? Is it because there's the mentality that, oh, you're going to do a good job because they're your people? You know, you're going to do a good job because you speak Spanish? Or is the mentality because you are a good reporter? And in addition to that, you know how to speak Spanish. In addition to that, you have that perspective. See, and I think that um, the, the answers to those two questions are very important. And if they're the right answers, uh, then the effort is going to be successful. The reporter is not going to feel demoralized because no reporter enjoys being assigned to something solely because of physical characteristics. Uh, so my question is, where are the stories nationally where you see Hispanics? I, don't, I look at the networks and I don't see myself there. That's right. Yeah. I mean, um, the Weekend Today Show should be very proud. They have a Hispanic anchor, Jackie Nespral, I'm sure you all know. And the executive producer and the senior producer have, I believe, al allowed us to do stories of the Hispanic community. But I think the, the bigger picture is where are our people in the grand scheme of things? Right, and we have to look at the overall coverage of whatever organization we look for. I mean, are we just covering the Latino community and just stories that are solely about the Latino community? Or are Latinos included in all stories? When we write about health care, when we sure. write about child care, when we write about work-related issues? Or, or, I mean, do we only see white faces in the paper, or do we see like a whole range of colors? I mean, that, that's very important. In other mm -hmm. words, not covering Latinos as a circus sideshow. Right, exactly. Right. You know, yeah. or as aliens from Mars, yeah. but, as, but the, with the message to the reader that these are people in your community, these are the people in your office. Mm -hmm. You know, these are Americans. See, I think a lot of times editors think uh, the Latino community just reads Spanish uh, newspapers. Which is totally wrong. The service, totally wrong. The, total, the survey says that more than 70% of Latinos prefer reading in English. In English. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we watch Channel 41 and 47. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that just yeah. makes me crazy because I was born here in New York City from Puerto Rican parents, very proud. We were educated in the system. And I am part of the system. And I guess the issue is, you know, do we continue to be segregated or are we united? And, and I love my culture, mm -hmm. but I'm also American and I also participate in the system. And I think that that's what we're, we're sort of faced with because we sort of put in one, you know, one outfit, we go to work and we act this way. Then we take off our outfit and we go home and have habichuela y ajo y mofongo and all that and listen to salsa. And that's wonderful, but I think that, that I see that the system, we need to be included in the grand scheme well, of things. Well, we're part of the mainstream, whether people want to acknowledge that or not. Uh, and the faster that they acknowledge it, the, the, the better things will be. We are in the mainstream, okay. yes. Uh, the question that I wanted to uh, go back to a little bit on the uh, what are we Hispanic or journalists uh, also reflects on the panel that I'm interviewing today. Mm -hmm. What are we? 
women or journalists? Does, do you guys draw a difference between the two or when you cover women's issues, when you want to bring out the concerns of women? Is there a difference there? Uh, one of the things that I am thinking about as, I, as we discuss this is American journalists, when they go abroad to cover a war or when sports reporters cover an Olympic event, they are Americans first and then journalists most of the time. Is that right? Yes, and I think that's wrong. And I totally uh, disagree with that kind of stance. I have to say, when I see a news coverage or a news report um, of, a, of a sporting event and you hear, oh, the American the team. For the American yes, team. the American team, this, that makes me very angry because I feel like the, the journalistic part of that equation is lost. And I think that that should always be in the, but in that's the a forefront. Sports again. Right, but I'm, it's I'm, not a news event, it's a sport. It's right. totally different. I think it, right. it's just a different. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I, what for me, I think being a good journalist, being an objective journalist, always comes first. I mean, I can't help sometimes going to a story maybe if it's about a breast cancer and maybe feeling a certain affinity because I'm a woman, but I still am there to get the facts and get all the facts and re report them and write them and make sure that gets in the paper. I mean, the, the other part of me doesn't intrude. I mean, it's there but I can't let that override the, the journalistic part of myself. Right. There is a, there's a part of me that wants to argue with you guys because <laughs> uh, I guess be ahead. because because I am a columnist and I don't have the uh, liberty to say that I have to be objective. I do take right. a position as a columnist and as an opinion columnist. I always say long before I was a journalist, I was already Hispanic mm -hmm. and that's my priority. And, and then, you know, I also remember that for many years I was a general assignment reporter. I did cover all of those issues. I was as much as I could be objective then. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, it got to the point where I now can specialize in something, that, something that I can bring to the news media that I work for. Uh, better than most people and so that's my specialty now and I am proud of the fact that I go out and cover the Latino community and go out to defend that community but again I do that as a columnist right. and, and that is something that th there's, there was a resentment to a certain extent in the southwest I, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Chicano journalists who did not want to be assigned to the Hispanic community uh, to covering the Hispanic community for many years. They used to call that assignment the taco beat mm -hmm. in a derogatory way because they felt that they were being tokenized. But see, this mm -hmm. is what Monica said. Uh, you, should, you should have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't be put into a certain community because of characteristics, you know, uh, that have nothing to do with talent or reporting or where you want to go in your career or what your, where your interests lie. You know, uh, the New York Times, I believe, does not assign uh, people to cover Chicago who are only from Chicago, you know. And, uh, the, you know, the assignments are based on merit or based on, uh, you know, reporting skills. And so that's why, that's, that's the problem, I think, is that a lot of us may feel that we're being forced into something because of reasons that have nothing to do with talent, you know. Because a lot of times, very undiplomatically, uh, an editor will tell a reporter, we need a Hispanic in this town. We need an African American to cover this. And the first question in the reporter's mind, although few will, will vocalize it, is what about my reporting skills? What about my writing skills? You know, and immediately you're second class because a reporter assigned to Medicine Beat, a reporter assigned to uh, the state capitol will be told of that promotion, of that change in beat in conjunction with some comment on your ability and what it was about your reporting ability that got you to move up a step. Whereas when usually, when it, and in, in hiring this happens too, we need an African, we need more minorities mm -hmm. in this newsroom. And that's not a compliment. And can yeah. I bring up yeah. something about yeah. a paper that, uh, there's two reporters who represent a certain paper here, which shall, which shall remain nameless, but uh, I remember applying there, uh, and I was over 30, and they told me about the Hispanic intern internship program. <laughs> uh, you know, they said maybe they can get me into that. Um, and I, I said, no thanks, I don't want to get onto your paper if that's the only way I can do it because you're hiring me as a Hispanic. I want to be, be hired as a journalist, and needless to say, I wasn't hired, which worked out well. Well, you see, I was hired probably by that same paper as a Hispanic, and I was proud of it. Mm -hmm. 
I was proud of the fact that they now recognize that there is a growing Hispanic right, community. Right, but it wasn't an internship program. That's for people okay. right out of college, and I've been out of college many years. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's wonderful. I think you're right. I'm, I was also, part, I believe, partly hired because I'm a Latina, and they needed more Latina representation, Latina representation. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's great that newspapers are doing that. But what bothers me is that when they do it, by the exact numbers. Oh, okay, now we have two Latinos, so we don't have to hire anymore until one of those Latinos leaves and we need to replace them with another Latino. No, I mean, they should be hiring more pr people because it's good for the newsroom and a more diverse workforce because it's great for the, for the organization, not because they need two or three or a certain number. But well, when you yeah. were talking about your days as a general assignment reporter mm -hmm. and you're talking about being a Latino first, um, wh how did that philosophy affect your coverage or no, did it? it did not but w what it meant was that I went to my editor very often and said look there are five stories in the Hispanic community that right. you're missing and maybe I'm okay. a general assignment reporter but you should be assigning because me to fine. those because stories because question, nobody else is paying attention right, to them. Right because that question may be misconstrued as um, are you loyal to a Latino first to the point of distorting a story oh, of or of course not. Of story. course not. We're not professionals if we're distorting right. the news. Right. Uh, I mean, that's that's bottom line. We have to be true to our profession. Uh, and, and I think that being Latinos, we are adding a certain dimension to that profession. Mm -hmm. We are adding a dimension. And I think I, sh I would be complimented if I, if I am told there's a town that has a certain population of Latinos that really deserves to have a Hispanic reporter there with your talent to go out and talk to these people because you can speak with to them in Spanish. Talent. Okay, but I mean, <laughs> it, they can do it in a diplomatic <laughs> way, I'm sure. And sometimes they don't, and that's part of what I wanted to discuss with you all again, and that is, you know, how are we doing with Latinos in the newsroom? Uh, I, I are we progressing? No, no, I don't think we're progressing at all. I think we need to see more faces like ours right. in those net networks. And I think we need to be producers, executive producers, you know, vice president. I could be rule knowledge if I have be given the opportunity. I mean, we need more people like this. But we and need I don't the general think public too also demanding uh, more Hispanic uh, uh, representation in the newsrooms on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't just do it on our own, just yeah. just well, as journalists. Yeah, and we need more. Um, and this is one of the things, I also go to the National Association of Hispanic Journalist Conferences, and I think we need our organization to take a, a bigger stand in trying to push for that as well. At, this, at the last conference in Washington, Leonard Downey of the Washington Post got pe people very, very angry by a statement he had made saying that minorities aren't qualified enough to work at the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. It happened with the New York to, Times right. a few years right, earlier, yeah, and it happens yeah. practically and the, every and the, year. And that, that, viewpoint is still there. I mean, there's, there is a move to hire more minorities, a move to diversify the newsroom. But at the top levels, that viewpoint is still there. Well, women aren't at that top level right. at all. It's That's all true. still an old boys network. But why do we always have to be called minorities? Right, right. I am not a minority. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just degrading to me. Right. That's just another way of keeping us in a little box and saying, okay, that's who you are and you don't get out of that box. Something else that happens in the newsroom, it's, it comes from police departments actually, and that is the categorization of Latinos mm -hmm. as a race. Uh, we're to certain police departments, we're either black, white, or Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And what is a Hispanic? We come in all colors. Mm -hmm. And then that is, that is transformed into the newsroom uh, where you have certain reporters who still need to be sensitized. Mm -hmm. Uh, and certain editors who need to be sensitized about that issue. Do you guys face this in your newsrooms? Um, I face it to a certain point in that people tend to lump all Hispanics or Latinos as one mass group. They don't realize there are differences between Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and Cubans and I'm Ecuadorian and mm -hmm. Ecuadorians and you know they everybody they think everybody has the same customs. We all do the same thing. We all think the same way. We all have the pol same political you know attitudes and that's not true and that's a battle I'm constantly fighting in my newsroom trying to educate people and say no that's you know what I'm happens, Ecuadorian we do this you right. know something you know. yeah I think what happens with police and and the reason that we just accept that information for example when they say the suspect is Hispanic mm -hmm. and someone that they have no other information about mm -hmm. just what witnesses say um, and the reason that it's so easily accepted it's the Hollywood syndrome you know uh, the caricature of the Hispanic as having certain features, you know. And so if, if an olive-skinned 
person, particularly a male, is committing a crime immediately, most people will jump to the conclusion that person is Hispanic. And then this gets told to the police. The police tells this to a reporter. The reporter writes it down. The editor, it goes through the editing desk. It gets into the paper. And a lot of times it's up to us to catch these things. Unfortunately, often it's too late. Not only is this unfair in that it perpetuates a stereotype, it's also a disservice to the community because imagine if the suspect is not a Hispanic, which has happened occasionally. Now you have people looking for someone who is Hispanic, you know, who may have committed this crime when someone may suspect that a neighbor committed the crime, but the neighbor is Italian, the neighbor is, uh, you know, Syrian, the neighbor, and then the person will think, oh no, but it's a Hispanic they're looking for. Well, you don't so this is also disservice. And then the equation from that into the general public is all Hispanics do commit crimes. Right. And that's, right. you, you don't know. see this mm -hmm. happening with people from other ethnic groups. You right. don't see the because, police because describing an Irish American. So why are we well, it's so Hispanic. Why well, no, no, we have to that's the any question. Well, I think it's our <laughs> obligation not to mm -hmm. use that term no, when we're mm -hmm. doing our what writing. What we need to ask the police is, it's fine if they want to do this. I mean, it's not fine, but, you know, it's our job to catch them. What we need to do is say, well, what do you mean? Do you mean that Definitely, the person has yeah. olive skin and dark hair? And that's what you write. Right. You know, you don't yeah. write that the person is I mean, Hispanic because there's no I mean, way to know. Look at the, the different exactly. of right. colors. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely we should be able. And with it, when you were saying that you were suggesting, uh, as a GA reporter, you were suggesting stories to the editors, I think as Hispanic reporters, it's kind of like shifting this along. And stop me if you want. But I think it's our obligation to suggest stories to our editors because a lot of times they just don't know, they're just not aware, or they'll see a story and they don't think they'll think, well, that's not really important, and we know that's important. Well, as reporters, it's our responsibility anyway, whether we're Hispanic or True. pink, yeah. blue, or blue or yellow, it is our responsibility. If we're out on the street, we find out about a story. It's our responsibility to tell our editors mm -hmm. if we don't go cover it someone else should but if we come from the barrio and we see certain mm -hmm. stories happening in the barrio it's still our responsibility mm -hmm. to inform the desk. And I yeah but when you inform the desk and you tell them this, there's a, a great story happening on in a barrio they don't cover it. Or sometimes they say mm -hmm. fine you do it. Right. Yeah. Or so, I wish they told me that at yeah. times. Yeah. Do it. But I do I think in that sense it is that's the part of ourselves that uh, the Latino part of ourselves that it's our responsibility as Latinos to go out there and say to our and editors, to know how to sell this the is story. what's going on, we need to be covering that. And it's also our responsibility to kind of act as critics for our organizations. If we see something in the paper that we find offensive, then we should go up to the editor and say, I find that offensive and you should have caught that before it went in the newspaper. Well, you know what, mm -hmm. one of your columns, uh, you, since you're subjective, you can offend people, <laughs> unlike us. And uh, one of the one of the problems. Don't tell me you were offended. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, some of your columns have angered me, quite honestly, uh, which is good. That means you're a good columnist. But as a Latino reporter, uh, I find that the Latino community doesn't want us to be objective. Uh, if we write something negative about their, let's say, a study, as you once did, you once wrote a very critical column about a certain study that came out, and I was speaking to someone who. Uh, helped put that together the report, and she was very angry with you that you, you know, that you even challenged the results of the study, and that's one of the. Uh, she the, never called me, but I'm glad yeah, to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the uh, challenges to us, uh, and that they have to learn. Our community has to learn that we are going to report both sides of the story. It's not going to be a sugar-coated story. Well, also, actually, you brought up an interesting subject in our community in the Spanish language media. Practically, especially the weeklies, not necessarily the dailies, but there's a lot of weekly newspapers mm -hmm. that are not objective at all. Mm -hmm. Practically every story mm -hmm. is that, written as an editorial. Right. And that's that the traditional right. in Latin America. That's and the way we, our yeah, people, our culture, they're right. used to this. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. expect you to take mm -hmm. a position. That's, that's right. a good point. And, and so, that, so that when you write for an English language daily, um, and, and you are objective, and you present the other side of the story, the side that they may not like, mm -hmm. they think you're putting them down. Yeah. And yes. then that's where we Latino reporters sometimes get in trouble with our own community. Yes, mm -hmm. or, or we'll be called uh, that. We'll be told that we're t we've become Americanized, mm -hmm. or and then the other side will say we'll, we'll say that we're too Latino. Right. It's like, hmm. well, sometimes we run into the problem, and we have very little time. But I like to cover this too that we are often depicted in a very negative light. Uh, we are the drug dealers, mm -hmm. and we are the criminals. 
And uh, basically, to sum it up, what kind of stories can we as Latino writers or reporters be offering to our media outlets uh, that can counteract that situation? Or should we be doing that? Well, well I think if you're, if you're covering a story um, that is perhaps geared to the Hispanic community, that you get people who will speak eloquently and who will change the image that they see every day on the television set. It's not trying to slant the story. It's just getting people who are in positions that normally are not seen because of whatever situation it is. And I think it goes back to including Latinos in stories of general interest. If we're writing a story about young professionals who are, you know, trying to find child care, there are young Latino professionals out there who are trying to find child care to make sure they're included and that we see the Latino surnames in the newspaper and stories about people who are succeeding. I cover Camden for the Inquirer, and part of what fascinates me about Camden is that there are people in that city, an impoverished city, who are really successful and full of life and love, and Latinos, and I try to write about them. because. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to go, but I'm glad we gave uh, our readers, our viewers, an opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, see what it is that goes on inside the newsroom, behind those bylines, behind the cameras. We'd like to know what you think about this subject. Please write us at Images Imágenes, New Jersey Network, 50 Park Place, Newark, New Jersey, 07102. 50 Park Place, Newark, New Jersey, 07102. And Miguel Perez for Images Imágenes. Gracias y hasta pronto.